So you've talked about how the free agency market is sort of like the talent market in Silicon Valley. Um, I think the quote is, it's about hiring the best people, letting them do their job. And I think you, you also said, I set the highest goal, pay them whatever it takes, great people attract great people. So I'm sure your CEOs would like you back on their comp committees now, but. Um, I mean, like but, that's as simple but, as it can get, right? But, you can read that in every book, there's nothing special about but uh, so, or it. I mean, these are simple concepts, which is that most people don't so do what it. Are the other intang- <laughs> what are the other intangibles, though, that, that, that uh, go into both attracting and retaining that kind of talent? Because this is going to lead into the new talent you just attracted. I think a lot of this comes from when you've been in the Valley and you've been a venture guy, maybe. You've had a lot of, you've done a lot of interviewing, right? You interview people a lot. You get to recognize it. So I think that helps, frankly. And some of the, you know, that sounds simple, but not all people that buy sports teams have done that. Some of them have never hired anybody. Um, they haven't, or maybe they inherited the team, or, I mean, it just isn't, just, it just is not so obvious. It's sports, right? It was, in the past, sports is, it's not really considered a business as much as it was enjoyment. And now it's not. These are billion dollar valuations or more, and it's a real business, and there's a lot of dollars at stake, and the professionalization of sports uh, is occurring before your eyes, not just with us, but with other franchises. And our league in particular, I think, is, is really at the cutting edge of this and taking, making great strides beyond some of the other major sports league, and I think is going to become the number one sports league. Part of it's because of very good management. All right, recently you did uh, attract a, a new player to the team. Um, and it's part of that you also had to make a hard decision because uh, uh, Harrison Barnes and, and Bogut uh, in particular uh, needed to move on. Um, I think uh, Azili as well moved on in order to get uh, Kevin Durant. Can you take us a little bit inside into the decision making, the maneuvers, the trip to the Hamptons? I don't know, any, any part of, of uh, being able to, uh, to, to win the Durant uh, sweepstake here, well, first, but also yeah. making that decision, because yeah. those are pretty heavy trade offs. I mean, you, by the I, way, I, I know that you, something I do know is how methodically you thought this out, only because I remember talking to you about parts of this a year and a half ago kind of thing in, in terms of uh, your thought process. So when you finance a company, Ted, you start a company, what do you do? You're thinking about not only the financing that you're doing on day one, the seed financing or the Series A, you need to think about what that Series B is going to look like. What are you going to do? What are you going to cre- What's this company going to look like when it's ready for the Series B? You better be thinking about that when you do the Series A, right? Yes. We all do that. And all, uh, you as a, as a CEO of a company or whatever, you need to be thinking about what your company's going to look like to the next investor because you have to raise more capital. Well, it's no different with this. We try to stay ahead of the game. We try to, try to, you can't just be thinking, oh, well, the draft's coming up. I, well, let's try to find the best player here. And uh, free agency's coming up. Oh, yeah, well, we're just going to think about that now. Do we have the cap space now? No, you need to be thinking about all that way in advance. So we're very, very thoughtful. Yeah. Um, I'm sure other teams are too. Uh, I knew we'd have a good team. The last, obviously, we won the championship last year, and I knew we'd be better this year. I didn't know we'd win 73 games. I thought we should have won the championship, but we didn't. I didn't bring it up. You did. Nope, we did not. By the way, I mean, you know, I respect the Cavaliers for winning it. They did it. I mean, I thought we were the better team, but at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. It's sports. That's why you play the game. They won, and now I need to take that back. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, you know, we need to do things like plan these things way out in advance. And you have, it's like a decision tree. You've got to be ready for a couple different things happening. We knew that we could re-sign all our players and keep this great team together. Probably a pretty good strategy considering we won 73 games and got down to the last minute of the last game. <laughs> Not a bad strategy, and I would have been content, we would have been content probably, and pr- frankly, that was plan A. That was the likely thing to happen. But I do think that once in a generation, once every 20 years or so, there's an opportunity to get someone that is one of the top players in the whole game that would be transformative. Now you have to ask yourself, are we going to be better? I don't know. I can't say that for sure. But I do know he's 27 years old, in the beginning of his prime, He's one of the two or three best players in the world. And he's a great guy. He has all the character things you were mentioning. He, he, 
he, he really does share the ball. He's a great passer. You can't be in our system without being a great passer. You know, people talk about the shooting, but passing is really at the crux of it all. And so we had a plan to go after it, like other teams did. Uh, but we did organize our, our cap space uh, potential. We did, we never, we have not done what I would call a bad contract. Um, Bob Myers has not done a bad contract in the four years he's been general manager, uh, which is pretty hard to, to do, to, to do that. When I say bad contract, overpaying somebody for the, what they delivered. Um, Harrison and, they were restricted free agents. In the fall, we did make offers to them, substantial offers. They turned us down. And uh, it was not a surprise because everyone knew, we knew, the cap was going up substantially because of the new TV contract in the next summer, the summer. And so if that happened, we would have, with a few other moves, cap space. So we knew that was a possibility. Unfortunately for us, we lost the title. And fortunately for us, that got us back in the game. And when we went to the Hamptons, uh, Certainly, we, we were prepared to go full force. Six teams were invited to East Hampton. So I had four players go with us. Uh, Steve Kerr, our coach, general manager, me, and Kirk, my son. So there were eight of us. And we had a very formal presentation to, to do, like in the beginning kind of thing, to get them, you know, that our, our tech guys had done. It was really great. And then we had a, a, a program, things we were going to talk about, but mainly get into the players talking, because it was really about him wanting to play with other players that he liked, which was the, we knew at least that much. When we got there, here's the funny thing that happened. We never even showed that. I, I don't <laughs> want to tell my digital guys this, because we never even showed that presentation. It immediately got into Kevin and these other players, our four players, back and forth, and I said, let it go. So I didn't really do much, except at the right time do my shtick. <laughs> You know, which is my salesman job a little bit. So what were the players saying? And to and the, and Steve did, and but but they basically interacted. It was that let them go, and that's what really won him over. It was a authenticity play, if you will. It was a genuineness of the whole thing. Fundamentally, if you just listen to him, and he just wanted to be play that kind and style of basketball, that culture that you were talking about. He didn't wasn't sure he believed it was real. All right. Yeah. Because are people really that are. You know, are they really those people? Well, Draymond Green started off and hard sell. He was great. He gave the heavy pitch, which no one else there would have done, except for me, because I'm basically the Draymond Green of the business side. <laughs> <laughs> then, Who'd you hit in the, in the bar at 2.30 in the morning? No, but I'm, it's kind of me, you know. And I did a heavy pitch on the business side. But, but then Steve is very soft-spoken. He told him about the style of play, how passing. He showed a few clips. It was very, very, you know, whatever. And then Steph Curry was Steph Curry. I mean, he was so genuine. And I think Kevin had to ask it like three times. Like, and even told us after, he questioned whether that was real. Is that person really this nice? <laughs> <laughs> he literally said that. Because he was sort of like, I don't want to, I don't care about being MVP. I don't care about the scoring titles. I've done all that. I don't care. All I care about is winning. And I just want to have fun. And then, like, and I, he had to assure him of that because, you know, this guy is the king of the world right now, right? I mean, he is number one, number one in, in sales of jerseys. He's tremendous uh, sponsorships and everything. And, you know, for Kevin Durant, who's probably one of the biggest also, I mean, they'd be like this if you're not careful. And Steph was so open to that that I think that was the, probably the most important thing that happened. But the last one was Clay Thompson, you'll love this, who basically when he was, he doesn't say much. And we were all kind of nervous about him. We, we weren't really sure what he was going to say exactly. Uh, and I didn't tell him what to say, by the way. But um, he just said, well, if you come, I know I'm going to get a lot better shots. Because <laughs> I'm going to be more open. Because they're going to be all covering Kevin Durant and Steph Curry. And, and, and I mean, that's what he said. That's all he said. And Kevin Durant just laughed. I, I mean, like, that was so honest. And so um, that's kind of what happened with the whole thing. Now, we let them go out and speak, obviously, uh, together, and, and then bombarded them every hour with phone calls in like any recruiting pitch you would, and had ex-players and everyone you could imagine call them all weekend long. And we were told later on that the other teams didn't do that to the extent that we did that. So it goes to show you, you know, 
It's like anything else. You need to be prepared. How are you going to go about this? Have Jerry West give him a phone call. Have X players, I shouldn't say the names, but it's been in the press, Steve Nash. Call him why he should go for the word. You know, all these guys that he respected. And it's like anything else. He, he finally, at the end of the day, it came down to us or staying in Oklahoma City. And I don't think I knew which way it was going to go, except that he fundamentally, that we, he just had to jump. He was there. He wanted to do it. And the question is, could he jump off the ledge? Because he knew he'd be criticized for joining a team that was already very successful. And uh, I, I, t I honestly, I couldn't tell you whether, at, right up to the moment he called me, whether I really thought for sure he was, I thought it was 50 50. But he did. He jumped. Because, and it was mainly, as he said, because of the authenticity of the whole thing. That's probably the most important word that comes to mind when I describe all this is authenticity.